Have you ever wondered how they make the oxygen to support the crew of the ISS? Or maybe you saw the Martian and wondered how we will be able to generate oxygen to support a manned mission to Mars. In this video, you're going to find out. On the ISS, the advanced closed loop system produces oxygen by electrolysis. This process uses water, either recycled from other systems or water brought from Earth, to produce oxygen and hydrogen gas. In the 2020 15 film The Martian, the hab where Mark Watney lives uses something called the oxygenator to produce oxygen. This is actually based on an upcoming experiment called MOXIE that will be included on the Mars 2020 rover scheduled to launch in July of 2020. The MOXIE experiment is designed to generate oxygen using electrolysis of carbon dioxide. If the experiment is successful, NASA has plans for a larger version which could supply oxygen for a future manned mission to Mars. The topics covered in this video about electrolysis will include setting up an electrolysis experiment, explaining the chemistry of electrolysis, analyzing the results and some interesting observations made during the experiment, and finally, applications of electrolysis in space exploration. I'd like to show you a simple experiment demonstrating the process of electrolysis. To set up the experiment, I filled a 250 milliliter beaker with a solution of baking soda dissolved in water. I filled two test tubes with the same baking soda solution. I covered the open end of each test tube and flipped it upside down and put the open end under the surface of the water in the beaker. If you do this just right, you can avoid getting any air pockets in the test tubes. Then I connected two wires to a 9 volt battery. I bent the wires and taped them in place to make sure the exposed metal at the end of the wire was inside of the test tube. I connected the white wire to the positive terminal of the battery and the black wire to the negative terminal. Once the wires are in place, you can see gas forming and collecting in each test tube. So let's take a closer look at the chemistry involved in this experiment. Electrolysis is an example of a decomposition reaction. During the reaction, the electricity is providing the energy needed to break the bonds of water molecules. New bonds are formed as hydrogen atoms combine to form H2 molecules and oxygen atoms combine to form O2 molecules. The balanced reaction for the process means that the volume of hydrogen gas will be twice as much as the volume of oxygen gas produced. If we dig deeper into the chemistry of this process, we need to talk about redox reactions. This means that there are reduction and oxidation processes taking place in this reaction. At a cathode, the black wire in my experiment, electrons come out of the wire and enter into the liquid solution. Those electrons are added onto hydrogen atoms. The process is called reduction since the addition of a negatively charged electron will reduce the charge of the hydrogen from plus one to zero. After being reduced, two hydrogen atoms can combine to form hydrogen gas, which has a formula of H2. At the same time that reduction is taking place at the cathode, the black wire on the left, the process of oxidation takes place at the anode. Here, hydroxide ions, OH- that were formed at the cathode give up their electrons to the anode, which is the white wire on the right. As the hydroxide ions give up their electrons, they become neutral. This causes them to form oxygen gas and water. Now, let's take a look at some interesting observations made in the, during the experiment and analyze the results. The experiment looks like it's running pretty nicely here. The reason why this works is that I have added an electrolyte uh, to this beaker of water. I added baking soda. And the other thing that's going on here is I've uh, hooked up this battery to these wires. Now the cathode, which is this terminal right here, has been hooked up to the negative side of the battery. So there are electrons that are flowing into the water at this terminal. Uh, those electrons are causing water molecules to be reduced and this actually forms hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. So I can see here um, that I'm getting a volume of gas, a uh, volume of gas produced right here. That gas is being produced at the cathode is hydrogen. Now at the other uh, end of this, so at my positive terminal, at the anode, the opposite is happening. So instead of, like over here, electrons being added to the water, here electrons are being pulled 
from the water. Now this is causing the water to become oxidized and this is leading to the formation of oxygen gas. I can see that the volume of oxygen being produced is less than the volume of the hydrogen and we should see that it is about half. Um, another interesting thing that's happening here in this experiment is that at the anode we're also forming copper ions and I think that's because of the wire that I used we can see the blue tint that's being added to the water and this is because of the formation of copper 2 plus ions. There is something really interesting happening at the anode so let's take a closer look. The blue tint you see is present because oxidation is not only producing oxygen and water, it's also causing copper atoms from the wire to lose electrons. This converts them into copper 2 plus ions. These ions are reacting with other ions present in the liquid to form a precipitate. You can see the collecting green material directly under the test tube where the white anode wire is located. I didn't analyze this material, but it is probably a basic copper carbonate which is forming. I could have avoided this by using a different type of wire, which would be less likely to react, but hey, platinum wire was not in my budget. Another way the experiment could be improved would be to use a different electrolyte, since using baking soda will actually cause some carbon dioxide to form along with the oxygen and hydrogen. A good choice would be sodium hydroxide. Let's take a closer look at current and future applications of electrolysis in space exploration. The International Space Station, or ISS, is a joint project of five space agencies, NASA of the United States, Roscosmos of Russia, JAXA of Japan, the ESA of Europe, and CSA of Canada. The station has been manned since November 2nd of 2000. Electrolysis systems are used in the Russian orbital segment, ROS for short, and the tranquility module of the U.S. orbital segment. Just like in my experiment, electric current causes water to split, forming hydrogen and oxygen gas. The Russian system vents the hydrogen into space, while the U.S. system pumps hydrogen into a Sabatier system where it reacts with waste CO2 to create water and methane. The electricity required for the electrolysis is generated by the ISS solar panel arrays. Additional oxygen for the crew of the ISS can be generated using solid fuel oxygen generation, SFOG for short, canisters. Burning SFOG canisters or candles generates oxygen by a decomposition reaction of lithium perchlorate. One canister produces enough oxygen for one crew member for one day. In the 2015 film, The Martian, the HAB uses something called the oxygenator to produce oxygen. Of course, there was also some oxygen generated by the potatoes Mark Watney grew, but that's a topic for a future video. The HAB's oxygen generation system is based on a planned NASA experiment called MOXIE, which will be included in the Mars 2020 rover. The NASA mission is scheduled for launch in July 2020 with a touchdown in Jezero Crater in February of 2021. Jezero is an almost 30 mile wide crater that once held the lake. Some of the mission goals for Mars 2020 include looking for signs of ancient life on Mars, caching samples for a possible sample return mission, and to run an experiment called MOXIE, which has a goal of generating oxygen from carbon dioxide present in the Mars atmosphere. The lead investigator for MOXIE is Michael Hecht of MIT. The project is a collaboration between MIT and the Niels Bohr Institute at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. If the experiment is successful, NASA could scale up the design in order to provide oxygen for future manned mission to Mars, which would be used for breathing, and to fuel a Mars Ascent Vehicle, or MAV for short. MOXIE is short for Mars Oxygen In Situ Experiment. In situ means in position, so the name of this experiment means that oxygen generated by MOXIE will be oxygen present on Mars in other chemical compounds. This is really important because manned missions will be much more efficient if the mission can take advantage of resources already present on Mars rather than needing to bring everything along with for the ride. MOXIE may also be referred to as Mars Oxygen ISRU in situ resource utilization. The balanced chemical reaction 
shows that splitting two molecules of CO2 will produce two molecules of CO, carbon monoxide, and one molecule of oxygen, or O2. The process will work quite like the electrolysis experiment using water. In MOXIE, the reduction process at the cathode will add electrons to CO2 molecules, forming carbon monoxide and O2 minus ions. Then, at the anode, the process of oxidation will remove the electrons from the oxide, or O2 minus ions, and form oxygen. This gives a net reaction of 2CO2 producing 2CO plus 1O2. I'm excited to see how the mission turns out. All right, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video discussing electrolysis and its applications in space exploration. I'm planning a number of videos in the coming year to explore other aspects of the Mars 2020 mission and its connections to NGSS.